Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We broadcast live on Mondays from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and achieving greater success and sustaining that greater success. Today's special guest is Andrew Rosen. He is the president and CEO of Hawaii State Federal Credit Union, and under his leadership, they have had amazing growth. And today, we are going beyond banking. Andrew, great having you here today. Thanks a lot, Rusty. It's great to be here. Hey, and congrats on the success of the book. Oh, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to reading it. It took me two and a half years to write. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, Andrew, your history, where you grew up at, and what kind of activities did you do in your youth? Sure, yeah. I grew up a uh, small town outside of Boston um, and did a lot of things. I was uh, really into the outdoors, camping, backpacking. Um, did a lot of sports in school, ran some track, played some football. Um, but for me, the most important thing was uh, just getting together with kids in the neighborhood, whether it was organizing a game of kick the can or pick up football. Uh, and in fact, in Boston, we had, uh, in the neighborhood, there's a little pond in our neighborhood that would freeze in the winter, and so we'd just play pickup hockey. Well, that must have been fun. That was great. I, yeah. wish, I wish I could have done that here in my youth. Yeah. <laughs> a little tough here. <laughs> so no tennis? You didn't play any tennis at all? A little bit. Yeah, you know, it's funny. My grandfather was a huge tennis guy, and up until he was 90, he was still playing, and he could still beat me when he was what? 90 years old. <laughs> he had this mean uh, drop. Spin and slice. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, you went to UC Berkeley, is that correct, for college? Yeah, I grew up in Boston, and then I kind of rebelled and went out west wow. to, to Cal Berkeley. And how was that experience in, in college for you? Oh, I loved it. I loved it there. A big school, and uh, I just loved being in California. And again, the outdoors, did a lot of backpacking and rock climbing while Great. I was there, skiing. And then you went to where for uh, your graduate schooling? I went to the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard, Ooh, wow. and uh, that's where I met my wife, nice. Maya, and uh, she's a local girl. And uh, so she uh, convinced me that we should move to Hawaii. So it's part of our prenuptial agreement. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me about your family. You have uh, three boys? We have three boys. Uh, two of them are in college on the mainland, and uh, the third is a senior in high school. So he'll be heading off to college soon. Great. Um, and great, yeah. It's, we had a crazy household when they were all younger and all at home. There was always a gang of kids over at the house, and we're always feeding an army of boys. <laughs> so, but that's what we love. We love now, that. Andrew, I want to know, what was your first job that you ever had? First job? Probably when I was, was 12. Uh, after school, I would work at the, the town library. Okay. I grew up in this real small rural town, and there was this little public library, and I'd I'd work there shelving books and checking out books and stuff. Yeah. And then did you do any newspaper deliveries? Yeah. Yep. Oh, so wow. when I was a little bit older, I would uh, deliver newspapers in the neighborhood, just riding my bike and throwing newspapers. And then when I got my license, actually driving around town delivering newspapers. Wow. So that's, an, that's a lesson to everyone that, that has delivered newspapers before. They can be a newspaper delivery and work their way up to be president and CEO someday. You can do anything. Yeah. Anything is possible. <laughs> now, what kind of experience do you have in, your, in, in, your, in the banking industry? Uh, so actually, before I moved to Hawaii, I was doing a lot of um, international finance okay. and uh, working with a lot of nonprofits and working in developing countries. Uh, and then when we moved to Hawaii, uh, it was hard to find something in the international area, so I ended up uh, working for Bank of Hawaii. Okay. And um, my wife teases me that, that I became bank man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and for 20 years, I was working for banks. Wow. Um, and just 
You know, the, the funny thing is when I was interviewing for the job there, she said, well, what do you know about banking? I said, I don't know. I'll read a book. <laughs> How hard can it be? Well, maybe not my book, but other banking books. Huh? Yeah, another book. <laughs> okay, so then... Um, I want to know the history. Uh, when and how did Hawaii State Federal Credit Union begin? Uh, great question. Hawaii State Federal Credit Union has been around for 81 years. We just celebrated our 80th anniversary last year. Uh, and it was actually started by a group of territorial government employees. The original name was Hawaii Territorial Employees Federal Credit Union. Okay. And. Uh, Basically, the territorial employees, they didn't have a place to do their banking, and so they created the credit union. And we started off in uh, basically a broom closet of the, in the territorial office building um, with uh, one staff person, one part-time staff person. And uh, 81 years later, we've grown into one of the largest financial institutions in the state, over 100,000 members. Great. I, I never knew the history about, I mean, that there's so much history with Hawaii State Federal Credit Union. It's amazing. Yeah, it's incredible that we've been around for over 80 years and serving people of Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and in fact, a lot of the credit unions in Hawaii started, some of them started on the plantations. And I think uh, credit unions have always been really strong in Hawaii, uh, I think because of the culture. It's very similar to the Japanese culture of Tanamoshi, where uh, people on the plantation would get together, pool their resources, and then if someone had a crisis or they needed to borrow money, there was a pool of money that they could use to help each other out. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, and so it's it's sort of part of uh, our culture here in Hawaii. And I think that's why uh, the credit unions here have been so successful and have so many members. Okay, so I want to know, Andrew, why did you make the move from big banks into becoming president and CEO of Hawaii State Federal Credit Union? Uh, good question. And um, let me tell you a story. So I worked for a lot of banks, um, both here in Hawaii and on the mainland. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time I'd find that I was the only person in the room who was asking, what's the right thing to do for the customer? Um, and that's partly just because banks have a different business model. Uh, most banks are um, privately owned or publicly traded, and their primary goal is to generate profit for their shareholders. The credit union, it's a different model. The owners are the members, and so you never get into that conflict of what's the right thing to do for your customers versus your shareholders. It's, it's all the same. And uh, so it took me a long time to figure out, but that was just a better fit for me, the, the credit union model. So is that, is that really, I mean, those are like big differences, but that's really what you like doing. Yeah, and I think it gets back to um, earlier in my career where I worked with a lot of nonprofits, um, and it's really giving back to the community. Um, the credit union philosophy is built on this idea of people helping people. And that's what we really uh, try to focus on at Hawaii State. Yeah, so what do you see as the roles um, of credit unions playing in Hawaii? You, you mentioned some of the, I mean, how it started and, and briefly how, you know, the general parts of it, but how do you see the, the role right now? Um, the credit unions, they really, they provide an alternative to the banks. Um, there's a few real big banks in Hawaii, and they do a great job serving people, but um, they're not always willing to, to make a loan to everyone who might need it. And the credit unions provide an alternative. Um, yeah. And then we also help keep the banks in check and make sure that they really are um, offering good rates and fees and uh, that their, their fees aren't out of line. And under your leadership um, since 2012 now, right. um, your company has had s tremendous growth. And you have such a strong team of employees that, that you've built. How did you do that? Uh, well, I was lucky. A lot of, um, there were a lot of longtime employees at the credit union who are just fantastic. And, you know, again, I've worked at some of the largest banks in the country, and I would put our team up against any bank anywhere in the country. Uh, we've got great employees. And then I was able to recruit some people to help fill in some of the gaps. But um, you know, we, we do. We have a great team. And I think it's really because people are passionate about what we do. Um, it's not just selling people uh, checking and savings accounts. It's really about 
trying to help people make smarter financial decisions. Um, and you know, our tagline uh, is always right by you. Yeah. And our vision is always doing the right thing for our members. And you know, we people, we try to remind our employees of that every day. It's always about doing the right thing. Forget about what our process or our rule says. Is it the right thing to do for our member? I like hearing that. And you have a thing called wallet wisdom, and right. it's a learning culture. Can you explain about that? Yeah, well, a couple of years ago, we realized um, that a lot of people in Hawaii are re really struggling financially. Um, in fact, there's a, a survey, uh, Alice survey, that's sponsored by Aloha United Way. And what that shows is that nearly 50% of Hawaii's households are living paycheck to paycheck. And what that means is if, if some crisis happens, an emergency, if your car breaks down, you're going to be in big trouble. And what we said is, as a financial institution, we have an obligation to our community to really educate people, again, to make smarter financial decisions, to help plan financially for their future, whether it's sending kids to school, planning for your retirement, buying a home, or even just buying a car. Uh, and so we've really committed to, number one, starting by educating our employees and making sure they really understand uh, the basics of finance, they're financially literate, but then also going out to our members and the community and teaching them, how do you improve your credit score? How do you save for, start saving for retirement? Uh, some of those basics, basic budgeting. Yeah, I like, it sounds like you guys do it all, and I like that you do it all because everyone needs help with everything, right? Yeah, yeah, well it's amazing because in school they don't really teach you um, how to make a budget and how to live within a budget. Yeah. Um, they don't always teach you those real common sense financial skills. So we want to make sure that people know how to uh, give them the tools so they can, they can get by, they can make it and be successful. I like that you're doing that. And I want to bring up Magic Johnson. You got yeah. to meet Magic Johnson about a year and a half ago. I mean, he's one of the greatest basketball players of all time, but he's also one of the best businessmen of all time. Can you share about your meeting with him? Yeah, I was at an industry conference on the mainland and uh, got the opportunity to meet him. And uh, he's hilarious. He just kind of, he's giving his talk about business and leadership and walks around the crowd. He just grabbed me out of the crowd and <laughs> asked me where I'm from and started talking to me. And uh, when I told him I was from Hawaii, he got excited and said, you know, well, the Lakers used to, we used to do training in, For in sure. Hawaii. And I said, okay, when are you gonna bring the team back now? Yeah. <laughs> so he promised, he okay. said, uh, he's gonna bring the Lakers back to Hawaii. So we're, we'll, we'll try to hold him to that. Yeah, and, and he keeps his promises. I mean, he's yeah. Magic Johnson. Yeah. So what's not to love about Hawaii? <laughs> but I was really impressed with how I didn't realize he was such a successful business person um, after his career in basketball. Yeah, no, and that and he's an inspiration to so many other sports, you know, stars because of his business expertise. So hopefully that keeps spreading. Right. Now I know, Andrew, that your, I mean, your credit union, you guys have done tremendous donations and Christmas situations for, I mean, can you just explain what you guys have been doing? Well, you know, again, we are um, a community organization and we believe it's important to give back to our community. Yeah. And so we do that through a variety of different things. Um, last year we uh, collected toys for uh, donations for Toys for Tots for kids around Christmas. Um, but again, a lot of what we're trying to do is around financial education, financial literacy. So we have a scholarship program that we, uh, the Lowell Kalapa Memorial Scholarship. So we uh, offer scholarships to kids who are um, members of the credit union who are going to college or a technical school. Um, we've been doing that for 15 years now. And then we have another uh, program called Investing in Education, where we give um, uh, grants to public school teachers to help them pay for basic supplies. Great. Now, one of the biggest problems that, that a lot of companies are having nowadays is security and preventing hacking. Yeah. What are you guys doing to address that problem? Well, uh, security and, and combating the fraudsters is a constant um, 
battle for us. Uh, they're out there, they're trying to hack into systems, they're trying to steal people's identity. So the most important thing is we, we really try to educate our members about how to protect their own identity uh, and make sure that they're not getting tricked into giving up their passwords or their personal information. So that's really critical. Yeah. And then we have to do a lot on the back end to secure our members' confidential data. Um, and that's a constant challenge because those hackers, those fraudsters are constantly figuring out ways to, to break through firewalls and to try to, to break into confidential data. Okay. Well, Andrew, that sounds, sounds interesting, but let's, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, I wanna go real in-depth with you about leadership and success. Great, sounds good, Rusty. You're watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Andrew Rosen. We will be back in 60 seconds. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, ThinkTech. ThinkTech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. My special guest today is Andrew Rosen. He is the president and CEO of Hawaii State Federal Credit Union, and under his leadership, they have had amazing growth and success. And today, we are going beyond banking. Andrew, you've received tons of awards. Can you explain what these are? Um, this one first? Yeah, well we have, the credit union has received a lot of awards and accolades, but this one is, is the one I'm the proudest of. And this is, it's awarded by uh, Hawaii Business Magazine, and it's the best places to work. And so for the last six years, uh, Hawaii State Federal Credit Union has been recognized as one of the best places to work in Hawaii. Great, and what is this fancy award here? So this is, uh, an internal service award <laughs> that we do. Um, again, service to our members is uh, one of our key, key goals. So we offer this, it's called the Red Pants Service <laughs> Award. And uh, you, know, you, you, you talk about leadership. One of the things that's really important to me as a leader is um, it's important to have fun at work. We take our work very seriously. We're managing our members' money. Um, but it's also important for our employees to have fun. And so we do a lot of fun videos, and, and one of them has to do with uh, wearing the red pants. <laughs> so this has become the symbol of um, always doing the right thing for our members. Uh, and it's called the Red Pants Always Right By You Service Award. I love that. And it's great. It's so important to keep things fun uh, in a very successful business environment. And you're definitely doing that. Now, you are a great leader. You are a fantastic oh, leader. And I want to know, what are your thoughts about leadership? Well, thank you. I appreciate that you're saying that. But really, it's about, it's about the team. It's about um, the people we bring on board. We've got fantastic people at the credit union. My philosophy on leadership is that, that people want to succeed. And my role as a leader is to, to help them be successful. Yeah. I don't think anyone goes to work and wants to do a bad job. Um, so I think the key is how can you help them be successful? How can you help them win and really excel at their job? Now, we've, we've all been on teams at some point in time in our lives, you know, whether it be sports teams or business teams, and we always recognize if the leader is good or bad mm -hmm. and those effects from that. What have been your experiences uh, being on certain teams before? Um, well, you know, 
I, I've worked for a lot of different uh, companies, different banks, yeah. and I certainly, when I, I worked for Bank of Hawaii, and there was some great leadership there, and I learned a lot. When I worked for some of these really big banks on the mainland, um, I was disappointed that there wasn't stronger leadership. Uh, and they weren't really able to inspire people and motivate them, uh, give them a reason for coming to work every day. And so that became a priority for me, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, leave these big banks on the mainland, get back to Hawaii and work with a, a smaller organization where I could really have an impact on the employees and, and create a strong team uh, and a strong employee culture. And you're definitely doing that. I mean, you have a great culture of excellence at Hawaii State Federal Credit Union. Yeah, I think we do. And again, it's, you know, we've got great people. We give them the tools to succeed. We get them focused on a common vision, which is really serving our members yeah. um, and providing that financial education to members, empowering people financially. And, um, and then we get out of their way yeah, and let yeah. them do it, let them do their job. <laughs> you see, that's brilliant. <laughs> now I wanna talk to you about success, because you're very successful. And I wanna know, Andrew, how do you define success? Um, you know, for me, again, it's, it's uh, I love what I do. Um, and the, what I love about it is seeing the people around me succeed. And so for me, it's, um, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's in banking or in delivering newspapers or any other industry. It's about uh, seeing the people around me grow and succeed and be passionate about what they're doing. And um, I actually get really excited when I have an employee who gets either promoted uh, within the organization, even if they get a promotion and go somewhere else, because you, you can see that you've played a role in helping them to be successful in life. And I, I can totally tell that you are very, your, your top priority is, is the well-being of your employees because they're gonna take care of the customers. Exactly, exactly. Um, if the employees are happy and they're passionate about what they're doing, they're gonna do a better job. And, and we don't call, in the credit union world, we call them members yeah. because they're member owners yeah. of the credit union. Yeah. And that, I think that inspires our employees to take even better care of them. Yeah, and I always said that good leaders have followers, which is fine, but great leaders ultimately build other great leaders, and that's what you had mentioned earlier. Yeah, that's, I really, that's my definition of success, is are we creating a team of people who love what they're doing, they're passionate about what they're doing, and they do it well? Yeah. Now, knowing that, I want to know, Andrew, and in looking back through your life, why are you successful? Um, you know, again, you, you asked me earlier about mentors, who yeah. were mentors in my life. And, and one of my bosses, at one point, he said to me, Andrew, I expect you not to come to me with problems, but to come to me with solutions. And when he said that, that really turned around my way of thinking. Uh, it really made me focus on, okay, um, you're always going to have challenges. You're always going to have problems in life, whether personally or work-related. Um, but the key is, can you find solutions? Can you turn a negative into a positive? Um, turn lemons into lemonade. Yeah. And then turn it into a win, yeah. a success. All right. Now, what's been your greatest obstacle in achieving your success, and how did you overcome that? You know, this gets back to the idea. There was a point in my career where I thought um, bigger was better. Uh, and when I, I left Hawaii, I went back to the mainland to work for bigger organizations, bigger banks. And what I discovered was, um, again, the bigger wasn't necessarily better. It was really about the culture, the people, uh, and the obstacle, the problem I had at those larger organizations was there weren't great leaders, there weren't great managers. And in fact, when I worked for Washington Mutual, um, that lack of leadership actually took the bank down. Wow. It became the largest bank failure in U.S. history. 
Um, and that's how important. That was a, a company with 50,000 employees, and all of those people lost their jobs. Because of bad leadership. Because of bad leadership. And that's where you know I just said, OK, um, I'm not going to settle for that. I want to be in an organization where we can really create that positive culture, empower people to do, good to do a good job, to be responsible, um, to, to serve the company and the members. Yeah. Now, Andrew, what do you hope to aspire to achieve in your future still? Well, I love my job. Yeah. I'm in a dream job. Um, but I think um, our credit union, Hawaii State Federal Credit Union, can play an even bigger role in Hawaii in terms of, you know, again, a lot of people in Hawaii are struggling financially. And um, I want to change that. I want to help change that and really empower people in Hawaii to make smarter financial decisions, to give them the resources they need to be successful, to realize their financial goals and their dreams. Yeah, no, I love these insights from you. And I have a question, like for me, but I know a lot of viewers will have the same question about the differences, or can you explain what blockchain technology is and Bitcoin? Because it's always sure. in the news nowadays. Yeah, well, Bitcoin, it's a virtual currency. And um, it's, uh, there's a lot of people who've made a lot of money investing in it. Uh, it's kind of gone up and down. Um, and eventually, um, virtual currency will probably become more current, uh, more popular, and more prevalent than cash. Wow. Um, right now, Bitcoin is still very speculative um, because it's not backed by the full faith uh, of any government, the U.S. government or, or anywhere else. But eventually, we're going to move more and more towards digital payments, digital currencies. Blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin. I see. And blockchain is something that um, we're really exploring in, in financial services as a way to prevent fraud, to prevent uh, hacking, uh, because it, it, it allows you to really authenticate who someone is. Today, it's um, easy for someone, if they get your credit card or your credit card information, to impersonate you and to steal your identity. Yeah. If we're able to leverage blockchain technology, we can change that because there won't be any way for someone to steal your identity. Wow, that's interesting insights for me. That you explained it in such a great way for me to understand. Now, before, you, before we close, I wanna ask you one more thing, Andrew. What advice would you give to others who are looking for their own advancement opportunities and promotions? I think one, most importantly, find something that you're really passionate about. Because if you're passionate about that, you're going to, you're going to work harder, you're going to be more motivated to be successful. Um, find uh, a good mentor, someone that you, you like working with. Um, because then again, you're going to be more motivated to, to work hard and to succeed. Um, and then just persevere. Uh, keep at it. Um, learn as much as you can when you're young. Experience as much as you can. Oh, that's great insights, but you know, you're very busy. How, how are you going to mentor all these other people now? <laughs> <laughs> Happy to do it as much as I can. Um, because again, that's, that's how I measure success. Yeah. Is how many people am I helping? to be Great. successful, to grow. Awesome, and Andrew, really appreciate your time in being here today. I wanna thank you for all your insights about leadership and success. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for uh, what you're doing with the show and promoting leadership, Rusty. Great, thank you, Andrew. Thanks. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, check out my website, rustykomori.com, and connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I hope that this show and my book will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to consistently outdo what you have done and to ultimately find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.